Amina San Komawa. Welcome to the sixth session here for uh, Intro to Japanese Language and Culture, University of Reddit. I uh, got my headphones on tonight because my daughter's kind of running around the house a little bit, so don't want to um, cause too many distractions by her uh, screaming, yelling, and all that stuff. So, um, seeing a few, see a few new faces here uh, tonight in the IRC chat, and so I wanted to let you guys know that. Um, the general chat that you're in is reserved for just kind of general chat, obviously. Uh, there's another room, just add a two on the end of that room, U of R Japanese 2, and that's where um, questions uh, specifically geared towards uh, tonight's content or tonight's lecture uh, should be asked. So we try to keep the two rooms separate so that, you know, if you have a, a, or a question about the class specifically, you can ask it to the TAs in the second room and not be cluttered with um, people just chatting about whatever they want to chat about outside of the class. So um, there is some instructions somebody wrote on there on how to join. Um, oh, <laughs> there's some instructions on uh, how to join the room. Just type forward slash join and then the name of the channel. So you have our Japanese too. Um, so you're going to see me looking over to the, I guess it'll be left, right? My left because um, I have my other screen active today uh, trying to trying to do it a little bit different here but um, today um, we're going to be covering verbs and uh, adjectives and nouns and um, depending on on the time we'll see which if we can get to all that um, so changed already from the syllabus um, Again, <laughs> like every every session, it seems is different from what it was originally, or even what it was a few days ago. But uh, yeah, just changed it a little bit. So added a little bit of content is uh, I think maybe uh, I might I, I was thinking I was going to run short, so I just added a little bit extra just in case. So um, to for the, just starting off with a little bit of admi administrative stuff, um, somebody gifted me twelve months of Reddit gold, so. Wanted to give a shout out to you and say thanks a lot. That was really nice, uh, nice of you. Um, of course, I uh, I read their name so I could say it here, but um, I forgot it, of course. But let me let me pull it up real quick. Oh, Caravan, K E K E R V A N. Thank you, man. That was really nice. Uh, I'm assuming you're a guy. Um, really nice. For you. I've never had gold, Reddit gold before. It's uh, amazing. Can't believe all the extra features. Actually, there's really not a whole lot of extra features, but um, so far, really the most useful way I've found to use it is that it shows like 1,500 com up to 1,500 comments. Um, so you know, most of the major front page posts, you don't have to sit there and load comments past uh, you know the 500 mark, which is pretty nice. Uh, there's a few other things I haven't really gotten to look at it a whole lot, but again, thanks a lot, man. That was really nice. Um, so, oops, I'm looking at Reddit now, not the syllabus. Okay. Uh, wanted to just go over the homework real quick. Everybody, thanks for completing it, whoever did it. Um, you know, for the most part, everybody did a really good job. Uh, it wasn't, I don't know, it wasn't really too difficult, but um, really the only major issues that a few people had were the multiple choice where, or not multiple choice, but select multiple answer question where it asked which, uh, which of the following meant uh, or could could possibly mean no, and the answers were chigaimas, uh, yada, I think, or damida, yada, and eto. And uh, I think a few people missed the eto because, um, as we talked about in the last session, that can you know Japanese people can um, hesitation. That eto just kind of is like a something that means hesitation, and they're kind of thinking what they're going to say, and that can be. Uh, taken as a negative response when you're talking to a Japanese person. So, again, something to take out a lesson from last week. You know, um, Japanese people kind of dance around saying no directly. So, if they're kind of giving you like a eto or anone or something like that, usually that that's that's meaning uh, no. So, uh, other than that, you know, everybody did pretty good. I wanted to put on that those few words, um, multiple choice like neko. And a few others. There's three. Uh, Watashi, I think. Just want to kind of 
test your ability to um, discern between similar hiragana characters because there are some some pretty similar ones. So just kind of keep uh, keep your eye out for that and make sure that you understand that. Um, outside of that, uh, there was some people getting pretty smart with the. Uh, some of the other answers, making stuff up and, you know, <laughs> getting pretty rowdy. But anyway, you can check it out. It's a, it's a public document. Um, the answers are all public, so, you know, feel free to check it out even if you didn't do it. Um, <laughs> sorry. When I look over like that and laugh, it usually means I'm looking at the chat room and seeing something that's funny. So, uh on to a little bit more admin stuff. Office hours. Uh, so far, the first week, office hours went pretty. I don't want to say poorly, but nobody really showed up um, except for uh, mine after last Thursday's class, which is fine. But I'm not going to ask the TAs to, you know, set aside one night of the week um, if if nobody's going to show up. And you know, it's totally fine. Nobody shows up. It's not, you know, again, it's not like you know, you have to come or it's great. I mean, for me, it means that there aren't a lot of questions so far, which, uh, I'm hoping that's what it kind of means. And that's, you know, that's good news for me. It makes me happy. Um, but maybe give it uh, one more week. And if we don't have people show up, then we may consolidate it. Um, or actually, you know what? I take that back. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a post on Reddit asking people if they would rather have the office hours, uh, at a different time, or if they, if it was a different time, if people, um, would be more likely to participate or attend. So keep an eye out for that, and please upvote that. Uh, I would appreciate if, if you see a post on the subreddit to upvote it. Most of the stuff I do is self-post, so I'm not getting any karma for it, um, just for visibility. So it may sh show up on people's front pages more frequently and um, you know, important announcements that they may otherwise miss. I know it's everybody's responsibility to check in on their own, but I would appreciate if you guys could just upvote stuff if you see it, just to, uh, again, for visibility purposes. So. Thanks for that. Um, in the last office hours, uh, after my after my uh, or after the Thursday session, it was a pretty good one. We had a we had a number of people in there, and they were asking some good questions. And um, one of the questions somebody asked was uh, the Wa versus Ga particle question, which is like um, probably the most dreaded dreaded question by any teacher of Japanese I think ever. Uh, you know, what's the difference between Wa and Ga? And uh, I wasn't really able to answer it very well, and so. You know, I want to apologize again for that, but um, as, as I was explaining, for me, it's. Did you guys hear that? That was my. I don't know if you heard that or not. That was my daughter. Um, but yeah, so the Wavers got question. Um, it's just for me. You know, I spent a long time just speaking Japanese in the home uh, with friends and stuff, <laughs> and. Um, it's just kind of become intuitive for me. So it's now that I've kind of gotten back into the academic side of it where I'm trying to explain things in English or even think about it in my own head in English, a lot of times I'm at a loss for words and I can't explain it. And it's really strange because uh, it's just kind of become become so natural for me that I can speak it and understand it in my head, but uh, it's hard for me to explain sometimes. So that's, you know, that's another reason why I'm doing this class so I can learn more about uh, Japanese my, myself and so I can learn more about how to explain it to people in a simpler way in an understandable way but I also want to say that if you search online for Wa versus Ga there's a lot of really great resources obviously uh, online where you can get that information and I'll probably look, research a few and uh, put them on the useful links page um, which I would recommend that you you know check frequently because we're constantly trying to add things on there I'm always mooching stuff off of uh, our learn Japanese, but um, yeah, so there's a lot of really good resources on the web, and actually, it was funny because that night when I was going to bed, I have this, an old Japanese textbook on my bedside that I kind of crack open, try to crack open every night, and just maybe read a few things, and I opened it up, and it was, I just kind of cracked it open to a random page, and it was the Wa versus Ga explanation, but when I started to read it, it was actually just like a nuance of Wa versus Ga, like in certain situations when you're describing things so I <laughs> um, you know I was like oh, oh this is great I'm gonna you know learn right now what I what I was uh, you know what I didn't know a few hours ago and I needed to know and then I started to read it and I realized that it was just like one part of the law versus God relationship and that you know it truly is uh, pretty hard to explain and kind of above you know an introductory level thing but no, I don't want to say that you, you should learn it it's important but there's a lot of little variant things that can vary and 
depending on the situation, as I'm sure you're hearing me repeat a lot, it can change. So, uh, you know, just keep that in mind. The WAV versus Gothing, there's some basic things you can learn, but there's probably a lot of things that are beyond the beginner's, uh, you know, realm that are out there that, you know, one day eventually you'll learn. But looks like, okay. So anyway, moving on. Um, So yeah, I wanted to, I'm kind of running out of things to talk about for the trip tips, but I figure I'll just kind of add stuff, you know, talk about stuff a little bit in a little bit, or topics that are a little bit less, um, have a little bit less subject matter to them. You know, obviously like transportation is huge. I mean, you could really talk about that for a really long time um, or whatever else I covered, you know, that that's pretty complicated subjects or <clears throat> subjects with a lot of information. But tonight, I just want to talk about something real quick, which is smoking, smoking cigarettes. Um, I used to smoke, and this past trip to Japan was the first time I went to Japan, and I uh, wasn't a smoker. But the reason why I want to talk about smoking in Japan is because uh, not only are there you know people out there who smoke, I'm sure some of you probably smoke, but... Smoking in Japan is just so much different than it is in America, um, and you know I don't know about the, the laws in Europe right now, but I'm pretty sure that well, actually I have no idea, so I'm not gonna say anything. But in America, you know, it's pretty much illegal to smoke indoors anymore uh, in any state, and um, unless it's like in your own home or something like that, or a private club. Um, but in Japan, that's not the case. Uh, it's still very illegal to smoke almost anywhere indoors, and so. Just keep in mind that when you go over to Japan and you go into like a bar or a restaurant or um, sometimes even like university classrooms or sometimes even hospitals, like it's it's pretty crazy. Um, you can smoke almost anywhere. And yeah, um, looking over the chat, somebody recommended uh, some things to talk about for uh, trip tips. So. Uh, you know, maybe I'll I'll post tonight on Reddit too with the office hours or also a, a supplementary question of whether or not or what what are some other things people want me to talk about. But also keep in mind that there's those two sessions coming up where um, you guys decide what the what the curriculum is going to be. But anyway, so back to smoking. Um, so yeah, just keep in mind that you might be walking into a you know a really smoky room if you got to eat, especially if you got to eat or, you know got to eat or drink. You're, you can pretty much count on being um, in a smoky environment. And obviously, the closer it gets to the weekend and the later it gets, the smokier it gets. So just keep just keep that in mind. Uh, also, it's really weird because when you go to Japan, there's really hardly any regulations or rules about smoking indoors. But... Smoking outdoors, there's like in Tokyo and stuff, especially in some other major cities now, um, it's like designated outdoor smoking areas. So it's really strange because you think like, well, okay, you can smoke pretty much anywhere indoors, but when you're outdoors, you have to go in a little rooms and smoke. It's really, uh, really weird if you first kind of look at it, don't understand it. But um, the reason why that is is because they had some incidents where uh, – people were walking on the street smoking uh, smoking while they were walking and as their cigarette dropped down you know into the regular arm swing it would like hit a kid in the face and like burn his eye <laughs> and stuff so that was that's why uh, that's why they have those those outdoor designated smoking areas just uh, heads up those are there so be careful if you're a smoker and you're smoking outside in Japan especially in bigger cities um, you know you want to just kind of be aware of your surroundings and make sure that, uh, you know, if there's nobody else smoking outside, it's probably because there's some designated area nearby or something like that. So, um, also, um, I don't know, I guess, I don't know how many of you are smokers, but if you want to buy cigarettes in Japan, um, from a convenient, uh, from a vending machine, uh, you're going to have to have like a, a identification card that identifies your age. Uh, and that's, that's one thing I should mention real quick about Japan. Maybe a lot of you know this, but you can pretty much buy anything in a vending machine over there. It's kind of weird. Um, it's, you know, beer, cigarettes, um, 
sex toys. <laughs> so yeah, that's kind of cool, kind of interesting. But anyway, so smoking, I'm trying to think. I mean, there's obviously other stuff I could talk about, but meh, it's not really anything you would need to know. It's just kind of a, a visitor. I think the most important things are just to know that you can pretty much still smoke anywhere in Japan. And, um, you know, so just be aware of if you're, you know, really maybe allergic to smoke or you find it really offensive or just really, uh, you know, you just can't stand it, then uh, be wary of, of where you're going because you're probably going to run into it more, more, than, uh, more often than not. And okay, so let's go ahead and get into the language for today. And ja, ano, tsukimasu tiyu na ne, tsukimasu. Let's continue. Throw a little bit of Japanese around. I keep hitting myself because I I feel like I should, you know, throw a few Japanese phrases in there uh, with my English, so you kind of get. Just kind of get it some some extra input here and there. So uh, you could say like tsukimas or tsugini ikimas, going to the next point, uh, or tsukimas, continuing. A couple of verbs, uh, which is what I want to cover here uh, is verb basics. Verb in Japanese is doshi, and uh, these words like that doshi and uh, meishi noun. Those aren't really used a lot by Japanese people. I mean, they will, they'll understand it, but it's more kind of linguistic terminology. Um, a lot of the stuff that I'm going to be talking about and a lot of the words in the vocab list are kind of linguistic terminology, people who study studying the language. But for me, it's you know important for me to learn the word in Japanese just because it's just part of the language, in my opinion, and uh, I think it's important to learn as a, as a, a foreign speaker. But... Um, yeah, so verbs. Verbs are in the form of uh, usually a kanji, or it can also be uh, katakana, but usually it's a kanji and then what's called okurigana. Uh, okuri, okurigana. If you recognize the gana, that's the same gana as hiragana, katakana. Uh, so okurigana is... The, always written in hiragana so it's never written in kanji it's always written in the phonetic alphabet so it's usually kanji and then okurigana and uh, that may be a little bit unclear at this point but we'll go, we're going to cover that in more detail here in a little bit um, you'll understand what I'm talking about and um, just keep in mind there are one of the most important things to know about Japanese verbs is that there's three main types and honestly I don't know if there's any kind of academic description of this, but um, in my opinion, there's really kind of five types. So what basically what they would be is uh, what are called goldon verbs, ichidan verbs, and then irregular verbs, which I can't remember what. It's like fu, ki, soku, something, ku, ku, soku, doshi, or something like that. Um, it's on the vocab list, but... The godan ichidan verbs are, uh, you know, I, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the Google document and switch here so I, you can see what I'm talking about because I think without a visual aid here, it's gonna be a little bit difficult to, to grasp. So um, see you in a bit. So uh, on the Google doc here, this is the, the words from the last lesson where we're using this. Go ahead and delete those. Um, so there's, okay, so Goldan, Ichidan, Irregulars, and what I, two more classes that I'm just kind of making up, um, I don't even think there's any really word for these. Uh, there could be, but I'm just kind of making this up. The other two are Sudus, and where the, wor the verb to do is just added on to another word, usually like a noun. Um, and then the final one is like a foreign verb, which is also sudo attached to just like katakana. So like check sudo, check to check. Uh, just t attaching sudo, the Japanese verb to do, on uh, on the end of a, an English word. So um, 
Oh no, sorry, I'm not typing anything yet. But uh, just keep in mind that verbs can conjugate into a bunch of different ways, and there's a really useful chart, uh, Aaron Buchanan's verb chart or something like that, that's on the uh, the useful links, and it has every con conjugation possibility for every type of verb, whether it be irregular, goldon, ichidan. Um, but I want to start off with just uh, the goldon verb and a or a goldon verb, just to kind of explain to you, um, you know, certain ways it can be conjugated, and it's kind of what I'm talking about. So, the verb nomu uh, to drink. So you can see here that. Oops, let me turn my guy John off. Uh, there's a kanji, and the okurigana, or, uh, well, I'm not saying or, but it's it's just, I mean, it's written, uh, the okurigana is in, always in hiragana, and the first part of the verb, the base part of the verb is always in kanji. Uh, so you may see exceptions to that. There may be certain verbs that don't normally, they may have a kanji, but they're not normally written in kanji, but overall that's pretty much how it works with, uh, with most of the Japanese verbs. So um, these are called godon verbs because, well, it's kind of complicated, but like there's other ones, you know, but the it's in a different, uh, gosh, I'm, I'm using my finger. You guys can't see that, obviously. <laughs> like this is the M letter. If you remember the, the uh, letters, the alphabet, there's like, you know, the vowels, ka, sa, ta, ma, ha, na, all that. So almost all of them have uh, verbs in that in their line. So, oops. So you can see here, you can just kind of go down the list. Uh, you know, this is the mu, this is the u, the ku, or the k. Uh, the s has one. Hanasu, the T has one, Tatsu, and there's other, there's a lot of other examples of this, but or a lot of other words with, you know, that have the end in, in these letters. Um, I do want to say, though, that there are a couple that don't have them, like uh, Fu and uh, You and a couple others. So just keep in mind that, you know, not all of them have a... Uh, are, are part of the okurigana and verbs. And also there's a few that are like, you know, the uh, voiced versions of them. Oyogu. So oyogu is, you know, you, you see the voiced version of ku here, but not all the voiced ones have them. So you know, just keep that in mind. And another kind of interesting fact actually is uh, shinu, to die, is the only verb with the new, the end line uh, for the okurigana. So, um, so uh, sorry, I'm looking over at the, uh, the IRC chat to make sure everybody isn't, isn't like completely lost. I feel like I'm kind of stumbling through this, but anyway, so we're going to work with the verb nomu today, which is to drink, and show you a, bit, a little bit about how a little uh, a little bit about how the word can change for various tenses and conjugations and things like that. So, again, keep in mind that it can change in a lot of different ways uh, beyond what I'm covering here today. But um, just kind of want to give you the basic stuffs. There are the basic stuff. So, first, I want to talk about the te form of a verb, and this is really important. Uh, you can really do a lot with the te form. And so it conjugates from nomu to nonde. And, you know, from nonde, you can do a lot of things like uh, nonde. It's used to, like, combine verbs. Um, it's used in a, lot, <laughs> in a lot of different ways. But I don't want to kind of confuse anybody. But the te form, that's how you write the, new, the mu uh, verb into te. Keep in mind that, like for kaku, when it changes, it doesn't use de, it, cha it changes into kaite. That's that, that te form. 
Um, so they will all change in different ways into the Tay form. But just keep in mind that you can access that verb chart and it'll show you how they all will conjugate. And for this at this point, you don't really need to know. I mean, you should you should start to learn how each one changes in the Tay form. It's really important, but um, I'm not going to be covering each one today just because you can you can look it up on your own. I just want to show you uh, just kind of generally what it is. So that's the Tay form, non day. Um, and then the past form, the next form I'll talk about is the past form. And that's written like that. So non da, non da. Uh, kaku would be kaita. So you can see it's just the day changes to da. Um, but you can also write this in a more formal way or a more respectful way, which is nomi mashita. Nomi mashita. So nonda and nomi mashita mean the same thing, uh, drink. It's just a more polite way of saying it. Again, usually the longer it is, the more polite it is. So, uh, the present form of nomu is nomu. So, just to drink. There's also a more polite form, which is nomimas. Nomimas. Um, kaku would be kakimas. And then the, uh, or I'm, I'm sorry, I apologize. This is a future form. So will drink, will drink. Uh, the present form is non dated. Non dated. And the polite way of saying this is non de imas. Non de imas. Non de imas. So uh, you can see already we're using the te form. And really this is just no, nomu in the te form, non de. And then combining it, like I said, you can use it to combine verbs, combining it with the verb idu or to be. So be, drink, drinking, present form. Um, non de du, non de mas. And then as I got ahead of myself a little bit and made a mistake, again, these are the future forms. So no mu, no mi mas, will drink. Uh, So that's that's pretty much it for the basic conjugations of godan verbs. Again, keep in mind that you know depending on the ukurigana, uh, the way that it conjugates and the or the way that it it phonetically changes when you know you're talking about past, present, future, or conjugating it, uh, it'll be a little bit different. So those will come pretty quickly once you start. Uh, seeing diff different verbs all over the place that you'll see. I think you'll, you should be able to pick it up pretty quickly. It's all, uh, they're all pretty similar and you can kind of understand it pretty quickly in my opinion. So um, you just notice that, you know, again, the kanji stays the same. It's this, the last part, the okurigana that's always changing uh, when you're, you know, changing the tense or conjugating it. So <clears throat> moving on, um, Let me go over to the chat real quick and make sure there's anybody that's like really uh, lost or anything like that. Looks like we're it looks like we're doing okay. It looks like Savile is asking linguistic questions that Spencer can't answer again. So that's pretty much par for the course. It looks like. <laughs> uh, anyway, so moving on to. Uh, ichidan verbs. Uh, they're verbs. The one we're going to use is taberu. That's to eat. 
So we went, we just did to drink, and now we're going to do to eat, taberu. You can see it's similar. It's a similar setup here in that, um, you know, it's the kanji, and then the okurigana, which is in hiragana. Um, just because it's an ichidan verb doesn't necessarily mean that it's always going to be two letters. Uh, it can be just do, but the ichidan verb is always do. So it always, in the base form, always ends in do. And the main difference really with this is that a lot of times the do will just drop when you're, when you're changing the tense or um, conjugating it. So instead of the last letter, like in mu, no mu, mu changes to mi, like no mi mas or no mi mas da or non de da. The mi, uh, or the mu actually changes in this, in the, in the ichidan verb, with the ichidan verbs, uh, it, it, it just drops, the ru drops. So for example, um, tab, the te form is tabete. So you can see that the ru is just replaced by te. A little bit easier to, to change these. They're all the same. So if you're ever changing uh, ichidan verb into te form, it's always going to be just drop the ru and add the te. So past form, tabeta, tabeta, and you can see again the ru is just replaced by ta, and uh, there's a more formal version of this, tabe mashita. You can see that the mashita is the same as nomi mashita, so that's going to be a universal way to make a, a verb, a polite Verb, pa or verb past tense in a polite way. <laughs> so, tabemashita. And then moving on to the pr uh, present form, tabeteru. Tabeteru. Again, it's just a te form combining it with iru. Uh, and then, as maybe you can guess, the uh, formal way to say it, tabeteimasu. Oops, that's not how you say it. Tabeteimasu. So, tabeteiru, tabeteimasu. Then, uh, future tense, just taberu, the base form. And then, tabemasu. Tabemasu. Um, so that's how you do basic conjugation, past tense, present tense, future tense for ichidan verbs. And I do want to say that keep an eye out for uh, verbs like this, shiru. There are uh, godan verbs like this that look like ichidan verbs in that they end in nu, but they don't drop the ru to conjugate. It's uh, it's actually like nom nomu or nomimas, so it changes to Shirimas. The ru changes to ri. It's not dropped. So, uh, as far as how to discern between those two, if you just come across a verb in the base form, um, there's no way to do it. So, <laughs> other than looking up on a dictionary or uh, hearing it in context, somebody using it in a different conjugated form, so you can, uh, so you, you know. But um, just keep in mind again that it's there, and so uh, the ru isn't dropped. There are verbs that end in nu that aren't ichidan verbs but actually godan verbs so but again ichidan verbs are always ending in nu which is why I think they're called ichidan verbs because it's just ichi it's one uh, there's only one row that it uses and that's the ru, the ru uh, row and I don't know if I think that's why it's called that anyway so yeah um, man I think we're gonna be pretty short today on time but oh well so the last the last official type of verb is uh, irregular, and irregular. It's irregular because, unlike the other ones, uh, the sound when when the verb changes tense or conjugates, the actual kanji, the pronunciation for the character, the kanji character changes as well. So. The okurigana changes and the kanji changes. So, uh, 
want to say real quick that it might there are all the irregular <laughs> I just said that word in katakana uh, irregular verbs um, change kind of differently and are, are kind of unique but don't be uh, disheartened because there's not very many of them I think there's only like five or ten or something like that I try to find an exhaustive list today uh, I tried to Google search for it and I couldn't really find it so um, I can think of a few off the top of my head but I don't it can't be more than like five or ten I don't think so um, for, sudo is one that we've already seen here um, Sudo is another common irregular verb, but anyway, so how to how to change this? So kudu is uh, going from uh, or just the, the going from the regular base form to the te form is kite. So before I hit spacebar and change it to the kanji, uh, you can see that it's not kudu or it's not kite or it's not, I'm sorry, it's not kute. It's kite. So the chain, the pronunciation of the kanji uh, actually changes. And when you see when I hit spacebar, the kanji does not change. So um, as I'm sure you lot, a lot of you picked up on, or wish, if not, you will see that most kanji have uh, a number of different pronunciations. So just another example of that. But so the uh, the okurigana and the kanji change. So past form kita. Kita, so not kuta, but kita. Or kimashita. Oops, wrong key. Kimashita. Uh, present, kuru, again the base form. Or kimas. So you can see these all change to key, from ku to key, except for that base form. Um, and then, gosh. I keep doing that. That's future, not present. Present is kiteru. Kiteru or kitemas. Uh, yeah, so that's how you conjugate an irregular verb such as kudu. And like sudo, I guess we should probably just cover sudo real quick. So sudo changes, again, uh, there isn't, I don't think there's a kanji for sudo. I'm pretty sure there definitely is not. But uh, so sudo changes to shite. And so it's similar in that the first uh, initial sound changes from u to e. So ku to ki for kuru. And su to shi for sudo. Uh, past form, shita. Sorry, I'm kind of scrolling over the place here. Uh, shita or shimashita. And you know what, actually, what I'm going to do is just add, a, add something on here. This is uh, the fourth verb type that I was talking about where you basically have uh, it's, I don't know if you want to call it like the Chinese verbs, where it's a compound kanji such as this yori, which is to cook. Um, or actually, it can be a, it can be, uh, a noun. So, or what a noun? Now I'm going to question my own English grammar capabilities here, but like you could say, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a noun, I think, where, you know, you could, you could be talking about cooked food sitting on the table, like, what kind of food is that? What kind of cooking is that on the table? Um, so it's not in a verb form, but if you add sudo, it becomes a verb. So it becomes to cook. And um, what you'll notice, the biggest difference between these verbs and other regular Japanese verbs are that other Japanese verbs are Japanese verbs. So they only have one kanji, and it's a Japanese pronunciation. So, um, you know, these, these words were imported from China, and the pronunciation was imported. So you just add a sudo onto the end of them uh, to make it a verb. And there's quite a few of these, so uh, just keep that in mind. There's a lot of them out there. And a lot of times you can kind of just add sudo to certain words and just kind of try it to make it a verb. Um, and I think, you know, in colloquial situations, a lot of times, you know, I'll just add it on 
to a word, even if I don't really know if it is, if it can be added or not, just to like, you know, convey an idea. So, um, so the way this this would conjugate uh, again is shte so ryori ryori shte te form. Yori uh, shita or shimashita. And then present form is yori shitemas, shitemas. Or I'm sorry, shiteru or shitemas. So uh, present form, ryori shiteru, ryori shitemas. And then finally future is ryori suru. Or ryori shimas. Hopefully you're seeing that the shimas and the mas uh, are very, very repetitive and something that's pretty important to learn. Um, but uh, and then the final kind of type I would say that I'm just kind of made up again is just katakana, like check suru. So to check, conjugated the same way, it's just suru added onto an, an English word or an imported word. So um, officially these last two aren't really types of verbs, I don't think, according to any kind of academic resource, but uh, according to me they are. So. <laughs> Just want to kind of explain it in that way so you understand that they're they're there. Um, want to uh, well, let's see. Let me go in the chat real quick and make sure. Just kind of looking through chat here to make sure there isn't any major confusion. Um, and also. You can put a O in here. Ryori o shimasu. In other certain certain words, you can put an O in there. O is the verb particle uh, to do something. Um, so you know it could be it could be either way, but there might be differences between what's actually the literal translation between ryori suru and ryori o suru. But uh, unfortunately, I'm not really sure what that is. So or if that if if it is or not. Um, I think as far as I can recall, it's just really to kind of add an emphasis um, when you add the O in there. So anyway, that's pretty much it for basic verb conjugation tenses. Uh, again, verbs can be conjugated in a lot of different ways, but those are kind of just the basics. So uh, remember that there's different types of verbs where the O could be gonna the end of it changes in different ways and there's also irregular types of verbs um, that aren't very many but you have to learn each one individually because the way that they conjugate is unique so um, wanted to go ahead and move on to the next topic which wasn't sure if I wanted to do nouns today or adjectives um, but I think I want to do adjectives just because nouns are pretty basic and really the way to change nouns to past tense and things like that is the same as a certain type of adjective. So uh, let's just go ahead and do adjectives. And there's two forms, there's two types of ad adjectives, uh, kei yoshi and, whoops, my keyboard's not working. And why isn't my keyboard working? Oh, there we go. Okay. Sorry about that. So, K yo shi and K yo do shi. Oops, that's not it. K yo do shi. There we go. 
uh, e-adjectives, otherwise known, aka e-adjectives, not adjectives, uh, true adjectives, and not true adjectives. <laughs> so, Kyoshi, uh the example I want to use is Samui. We already kind of went over that, uh, or we already covered this as a vocabulary word, I think, earlier, but Samui, which means cold, and it means cold when referring to uh, like your own, if you're cold, like you want a blanket, or if it's cold outside. Um, the other cold is sumetai, which is uh, like when you're talking about cold to the touch, or um, like a cold heart, or there's a couple of very other various usages, but this samui is used for like weather and temperature description. Um, well, not temperature description necessarily, but you know, if you're cold, if you're saying you're cold. So again, you can see that it's similar to verbs in that there's a kanji and then there's a hiragana on the end. And when you're changing the uh, the form of a adjective, uh, the kanji stays the same and this changes. So the uh, hiragana changes. So uh, like to negate an adjective, samui. Samukunai. And actually um, using changing the e to ku, so you can see the e drops and the ku replaces it, and then you continue on with whatever you're writing after that. So uh, in this form or in this word to negate it, not cold, you just add nai, and nai is negative or no. You're going to see that a lot. Very common word. Um, I think it might be an actually an adjective in and of itself. Nai. So you can use the samuku, samuku or the ku, dropping the e and adding the ku to do a lot of different things uh, with adjectives, like uh, to combine it with multiple adjectives. Samukte. Anyway, we're we're not covering that today, so sorry. Um, but yeah, just again, kind of like the tay form in that you can do a lot when you drop the e and add the ku, but. Um, to make a adjective past tense, you say uh, you drop the e and add katta, samukatta, samukatta. So from samui to uh, samukunai to samukatta, and some verbs you'll, or some I'm sorry, some adjectives are like this sumitai where there is hiragana here. This ta does not change, it stays the same. Um, some are just an E right after the kanji, and some aren't. So um, for this one, it would just, the e would, this E would drop, and it would change like these two, but the, the ta would stay there. So um, that's pretty much it for, for adjective conjugation um, that I want to cover today for E adjectives. The other type of adjective is the na adjective, and keio doshi. And that's uh, I think the one I wanted to use is that is um, gosh, what was the what was the word? I guess I guess I'll just use uh, kide. Whoops. Okay, my keyboard my keyboard's acting funky again. Sorry. Yeah, we don't need the kanji. Um, so, like, pretty. All right, so you know what? Yeah, let's do muda. Wasteful. So, the base form is uh, na, muda na. It's like wasteful or to be a waste. And so, the base form of samui is samui, and the base form of uh, a na adjective is just whatever the word is, is na. And you can see again that this is kind of uh, similar to the verbs in that this is the Japanese, uh, a single kanji 
and then this one is a two kanji. So you'll see that commonly like this is more of a, ch a Chinese word and this is a Japanese word. So uh, that's very common. And um, also when you're taking, just like the verbs, when you're adding sudo onto a Chinese word, uh, when you're adding, when you're making a word that's not an adjective into an adjective, uh, like a Chinese word or uh, a kanji combination word, you just add the na on the end of it. So uh, to negate this, you just say muda janai. You can also say muda de wa nai. Whoops. Is that on? And you can say this more politely. Muda de wa arimasen. Um, to make it past tense, you just say muda da or muda deshita. Um, yeah, <laughs> so I feel like I'm really bumbling through this. I don't know why I just have a weird feeling, but, um, that's how you, that's pretty much the basics of conjugating the non-adjectives from uh, regular to net, from base form to negative. Um, and also just, oh yeah, I should probably say that muda des is the polite way of saying muda na. And samui des this is a polite way of saying uh, e adjective samukunitis. Samukunitis. So just adding the des on after the e. Uh, samukatadis. Samukatadis. So, um, you know, you can like. You can double negate this, so samuku nakunai, <laughs> if you wanted to. You can double negate it into eternity if you wanted to. Samuku naku 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 nai, <laughs> if you wanted to. Um, so just, you know, again, you're just uh, negating that E adjective over and over and over again. But, um, yeah, that's that's kind of the basics of, of changing adjectives. Uh, again, the two main forms, what you need to remember, the two main forms are e the e adjectives here Nante. <laughs> sorry my, my daughter is coming to say hello um, yeah. right. uh, the that's my daughter right there she's singing a little Japanese song I think um, Yeah, that's me. My time we do. She's saying like, "There's dad, there's me too." <laughs> uh, sorry, kind of got distracted there. Um, so uh, I don't know. I feel like today's class was kind of lame. Sorry. Um, I think I'm just gonna wrap it up now, and we're almost at the hour spot, and. Uh, that, that's that's pretty much. I was gonna try to do nouns today too, but I think we'll just save that for next time when I'm not as kind of scatterbrained. I don't know why I'm feeling this way right now, but um, sorry, sorry for the kind of low quality today. But anyway, um, I think really the most important thing to keep in mind with what we covered today is that there are uh, a really really long list of different ways that these words can change depending on what you're trying to say, but there's always kind of that base part of it, which is usually comprised of what the kanji is. And, um, you know, outside of, outside of the kanji is where all the change takes place. And, you know, just kind of try to slowly learn the different ways you can do it. Utilize that verb chart that, uh, that's, that's on the useful links. The verb chart, I didn't find that until maybe like a year ago or something and, uh, via Reddit, of course. And, uh, it's like unbelievably, uh, 
useful and uh, extensive, exhaustive. So, um, yeah, I think I think I'm just gonna wrap it up for today. And uh, the homework is just gonna be another assignment like last time, and um, it'll be I haven't written it up yet, so I'll probably try to write it up tonight or tomorrow, uh, and either post it tonight or tomorrow. So keep an eye out for that and. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Saw so, uh, again a few new faces tonight. That was nice, and some of the old faces. Um, I want to give a shout out to uh, the TAs too. You guys have been really great so far, helping me out, especially Travis. I mean, Spencer and uh, Tracy, especially you two. You guys have been great. Always been there for me. And uh, you know, if it wasn't for you guys, this definitely wouldn't be happening uh, the way it, the way it has been going so far. So, want to give a shout out to you guys. Thanks again. If anybody wants to buy me red or gold, like what already happened, buy them red or gold instead, okay? <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to wrap it up tonight. Tonight, I'm not going to be able to hang out very much afterwards, so, um, minasan, arigato gozaimasu, sayonara.